we're starting to see lots of progress. The electrician wired the containers so they operate through the generator and with our new solar panels. We built stands for the batteries. This is our first project. How we do? We did that. We did. We did that. Next, we added the wheels. And voila, our battery stand was born. It's like our own little pump house. Next on the agenda is insulation. We researched several ways to keep the containers efficient against cold, heat, and moisture. We decided on spray insulation for several reasons, including it gives you an airtight seal and it serves as a moisture barrier and mold deterrent because it seals holes and cracks better than other types of insulation. And even though it costs more up front, it'll save you money in the long term because of the energy savings. The average savings rate is at least 50% compared to 30% with other types. It also is a greener option than other types of insulation because it lasts longer and contains less materials. So, which type of spray foam? Well, you've got two choices, open and closed cell. Both have all of the benefits I already mentioned, but there are some differences. Open cell is the cheaper version, and it's better at blocking out noises. Closed cell is dense, and it works better at keeping air and water from penetrating the walls. So we went with open cell, because closed cell wouldn't alert us to the leaks. So I don't know if your hands are supposed to be all on there. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we were finally getting excited about all of the progress, then this. A stop work notice for not having a permit for building on family land. So how do you know when you need a permit? And if so, what type? Well, it was a question even city workers couldn't answer consistently. Because we're going to City Hall because we got this big sticker on the containers saying we could not build anymore because we need a permit. A permit. A permit. The problem is, is nobody knows what type of permit. We were already down here on Friday. We took a drive to downtown Phoenix to find out how we could comply with their rules. They're just giving us a hard time and I'm over it. Just yeah. And and even if we follow the rules of getting this permit, hiring engineers and all of the above that defeats the whole purpose of doing anything DIY, right? Um, it'll be a month. Right. So that's that officially just ridiculous. Yeah. A month. So a month and who knows how much money and right for for something that they don't even have the answer to right so to be clear just just for clarification <laughs> purposes before we started this project we did speak with the, with the inspector with this with the city mm -hmm. and because of the, the the difference of our project we, we were building on private land it's um, temporary it temporary stand. structure we weren't plugging into the grid we weren't using electricity we weren't using water anywhere we were just all of the above, but in the end, they told us we didn't really need we didn't need one. But once we got the notice saying you need a permit, we were totally fine with getting one. You know, we the want problem, to support the, the hold on. We want to support the community. We do, we do. But the problem was is that they couldn't tell us what kind of permit we needed. Right. So that was the where all the confusion were. So we were like, okay, so what do we need? Then we'll go, we'll go and get it. But but we went from department to department, and I'm telling you, I feel bad for some of these city employees because they, really they pulled out books. They were looking for rules and regulations, calling, sending us around to different departments. But in the end, nobody could tell us what type of permit we so, needed. So so basically, what they said was, you know, here's the easy thing for you guys to do. Why don't you just move and then right. all of it goes away. They say in 60 days, but, everything will go away if you just leave, which that's that's supportive. That's very supportive. Yeah. Like, um, Makes us wanna... just leave? Yeah. We're, okay, anyway, so yeah. But they said really bottom line is it would be the easier solution because in order for us to get the type of permit that they thought maybe we needed, it would just be a lot of work we needed. They wanted a site plan, but it wasn't for the site that we were, you know, building on. Um, 
they wanted. Uh, we needed an engineer. Oh, this is the thing. We needed an engineer plan to see how the containers would be anchored down. Right, because the wind is so strong here in Phoenix, right? So strong. So that it's going to blow it they away. They thought it would blow it over. So yeah. They went as far as not just for our containers, but we rented storage containers from Holloway, little 20-foot containers that you, you know, pods, all of those places you rent them. And they said those were not even allowed to be on the property because they needed to be anchored down as well. So, you know, as we drive through our community, we see a very lot of containers. We're like, that's not anchored. That's not anchored. But really, I mean, come on, you guys. We're trying to do something different here. But, you know, because of the codes and all of that stuff that's not updated through our cities or what are our counties even, you know, we got blocked. So. It, it, it definitely is frustrating and it's something it's not we're not new to it we are not alone in this a lot of no. people have been complaining about permits and city codes and things and and I don't think the cities are so horrible I know some some of you guys think they are I just think they haven't caught up so they really just don't know they but don't. we have an easy solution what road trip <laughs> Our friend Pete with ProTech Painting got the containers ready for their new home. And they're looking road ready to me. It's moving down. It's moving down. <laughs> ah! Texas, here we come. Let the next phase begin.